How did this dog learn to paint and what did he have to say when I interviewed him in the studio? Plus, why is this guy cuddling an alligator? We're revealing the mysteries of amazing animals on this episode of The Breakdown. Welcome to The Breakdown, I'm Luke Monis, and first up, I've got the preview of a longer story coming to InsideEdition.com, and stick around after the package because we've got Dog Vinci himself live right here in the studio. One thing to know about Dagger is that he loves to paint. Dagger is known in the art world as Dog Vinci. Come on, Dagger, paint. Come on. Good job, Dagger. My husband and I volunteer for Canine Companions for Independence, and Dagger was no longer going to be considered to be a um, service dog. So they asked us if we wanted to adopt Dagger, and we said yes. These workshops where you've got a dog that paints is, is absolutely unique. It's rare. I never saw a dog paint in my life. So Dagger paints an abstract, pure, true, abstract art. Keep painting, Dagger, up here. Good job. It inspires children to be able to do it too. You know, if Dagger can do it, I can do it. I think the combination of hearing about Dagger, hearing his story, painting, then having time to be with Dagger, it resonates with, with every age. There's a lot of him to love. <laughs> People have asked me, when Dagger is done and retires from doing this, would you train another dog to do this? I think that you can't get that combination of that temperament, this great talent, and that loving dog kind of -ness. That's Dagger. That's him. Thank you, Dagger! Here he is, everyone. Please welcome Dog Vinci, AKA Dagger. And look at this lovely gift he made for the breakdown. And here's his official certificate of authenticity or dog authenticity. Incredible. I'm gonna put this on the shelf so we can really get the interview started. And I think there's a good chance that this will live here forever. I'm not even gonna sell this. This means too much to me. I would only sell it for a significant upgrade, like a painting by an elephant, something like that. But on that same token, do you think elephant painters are hacks? I've seen elephants paint, or should I say, what goes on inside an artist's mind? Hmm? What's happening under that beret? I want to know. Much like Monet did with pointillism, you've established quite a style. Can you speak about um, your process here? Uh huh. What do you say to the copycats, many of whom are literal cats? No? You don't want to? Yeah, I get it. Don't wade into those waters. I want to, I'm trying to keep things on the rails here, but I, this doesn't usually happen to me in interviews, but I can't tell you the uh, tremendous urge I'm resisting to want to just reach over and pet you. So your fans call you Dog Vinci, but your inner circle calls you Dagger. Is that true? Where does that name come from? Dog Vinci, you're a true artist, and like any artist, you also deserve a treat break. And uh, would you do me the honor of a treat break? Can we get a treat break here, guys? I'm starving. All right, here we have one of Dog Vinci's favorite snacks. I believe these are green beans, is that correct? Of course, it's well documented among every viewer who's ever seen a frame of this show that I am also partial to green beans. There you go. Not bad. This is a reward for a great painting. I don't have any money I can give you for that, but I do have just this bowl of green beans. Up, 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 up. Who'd you learn this post-painting green bean thing from, huh? Andy Warhol, George O'Keefe, Ansel Adams, photography, also art. Well, Dagger, thank you for being here, and most importantly, thanks for all the great work you do, teaching people how to be brave, how to be creative, and how to love art. You're a very good boy. Ciao Bella, Dog Vinci. Ciao Bella. Up next, find out why this man is cuddling an alligator. Don't click away after this, because I'm sitting down with Stephen Fabian of Inside Edition to hear secrets from behind the scenes. 
Imagine encountering this wild beast out for a stroll. Joe Henney of York, Pennsylvania, takes his pet alligator Wally everywhere with him. The five foot long gator with 83 razor sharp teeth is, get this, his emotional support animal. Here is your official card, mm -hmm. registered emotional support animal Wally, with a picture of Wally, his date of birth, January 3rd, 2015. So yes. this shows you're not kidding. No, not at all. He is federally licensed emotional support animal. Wally loves getting kisses. <laughs> My husband's gonna be jealous, Wally. And being hugged. Aww. He is quite the ladies' man. Isn't he gorgeous? Yep. Wow. He is heavy. Yeah, he'll hug oh, you, yes. Bigger than all my babies. <laughs> oh my God, he feels so good. He's so gentle that Joe actually takes him to a daycare center. The alligator just touched me. The alligator touched you? Yeah. Where parents and staff can't get enough. Oh, he's my baby. <laughs> Back home, the 35-pound gator has free reign of the house. Wally loves watching TV and even has his own pool. Aren't you worried he's going to bite somebody? No. No, Wally, you can't, I don't think there's anything you can do to make him bite anybody. Joe says Wally's cuddles have helped him through depression. Uh, he's not your typical alligator. He's just, he's more affectionate. Uh, he just comes up and he just lays and cuddles. He'll get, take naps with me. Who knew a gator could offer one guy so much emotional support? We're here with Inside Edition Zone, Stephen Fabian. Stephen, thanks for being here. Casual Stephen. Off the air Stephen. So tell me about Wally, the emotional support alligator. What was it like being out there? The first thing that comes to mind that sort of didn't make it into the piece. Yeah. We met so many people in that town who mm -hmm. wanted to hold Wally and knew Wally already just from kind of being around town. Yeah. A lot of women were, were like drawn to Wally. We kind of were making the joke that Wally was a ladies man. A ladies man. Or a ladies gator. Right. You could say. These people in the town, and like I said, it was mostly women. Right. Would pick him up. Matriarchal And society. instantly start bouncing him like he's yeah. a baby right i noticed a lot of maternal instincts kicking in it was impressive to see all these people just not afraid to, to hold this alligator i'd never thought i'd say this about an alligator but it seems like he has kind of an inviting face like i was watching the video i was watching you t you interact with him and the children with him. he's kind of going like this the whole time well yeah and when he when you hold him yeah he kind of hugs you back he was hugging you back he was hugging you back like a like almost like a baby yeah I, and I, I thought my god is this the smartest alligator on earth or the most emotionally intelligent alligator on earth i, I gotta say too i was skeptical at first but there is when you hold him yeah there is something like kind of comforting because he's like cool to the touch yes soft but also kind of rough joe cried mm -hmm. he said that you know the alligator means so much to him he took he helped him through a dark time, through depression and whatever. And you know what? If that's what helps, if an alligator helps you get through your your depression, your anxiety, whatever, then go for it, man. And that's great. That's a, that's kind of the lesson that we picked up was like an emotional support animal can be whatever you want. So Steven, watching this emotional support alligator story, it's got me thinking, who do I have around for me? I'd like some emotional support. I think you and me should be BFFs just like Wally and Joe. Dude, I thought you'd never ask. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Shut your mouth. This is the comment section. Trinity C commented, what if you did a tour of the studio? I think it might look a little something like this. And they don't usually let me in here when we're not recording, but you know what? I don't care. I'm gonna show you guys the studio because that's what you want. You can actually get a look here at the desk. This is where I sit down. You also might notice from this view that I am dressed 
like a little Boy Scout. Whenever we have our wonderful Inside Edition reporters come on the show, uh, they sit here in this chair. It's the same chair that I sit in, although it has uh, clearly a little bit more journalistic integrity. And this is probably what you guys have been waiting for. This is the other side of the studio. This is what I look at. This is the Luke view. Ooh, cool. So this is just the studio where we record a lot of the breakdown, but we actually do a lot of filming all over the Inside Edition news floor. So let's go check that out. All right, guys, we're now at the front door of Inside Edition. You wanted a tour, you got it. Let's go check out the Inside Edition floor. Let's do it. Well, guys, we're here. This is where they film the show. This is where the magic happens. I'm very excited right now. This is the Inside Edition newsroom. All these cubicles, people are breaking news all the time. This is where, this is the real deal. This is journalism. Let's go look at where we interview people on Skype. Come on, let's check that out. Whoa. This is where we do all of our Skype interviews, all of our FaceTime interviews. So we talk to people right through this little camera right here. All right, now over here is our VO booth. Let's go check that out. This is where we record sound and we don't do a lot of news. Mostly what we use this for is ASMR. So we just come in and we say hi. Now I'm talking to myself in a room with no windows. This is the interview room. The TV show uses this, but they don't mind at all if we come up here and check it out. It's got some cool signage on the door here, interview in progress, whenever, on air signs on. I wouldn't pay too much attention to these signs, you know, no food, no beverages. It's mostly decorative, you know? Let's go check it out. Oh, I, oh, I am so sorry. Wow, I am so sorry. I'm such a big fan of yours. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an episode, and we'll see you next time on The Breakdown. Yeah.